Did you know that you are a temple of the living God? Hi, my name is Keith and this is my daily walk. So today my daily walk takes me into my office here and uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Before we go too far, I encourage you to like these videos, subscribe to my channel, and remember to share them with your friends. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let's read those verses starting in 16 and 17. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. As we go through chapter three in 1 Corinthians, we see that Paul is addressing uh, the unity or disunity in the church. We have in throughout this chapter, I'm, I'm a follower of Paul, or I'm a follower of Apollos, or you know, I'm a follower of Christ. And, and so what we see is that Paul is saying in these chapter or these verses that uh, we all are followers of Jesus Christ. That man's doctrines and man's uh, ways of doing things are not the way that people come to Christ. We remember that um, there were false teachers who were coming into the church and Paul's really trying to uh, create unity. And so this message today when he says that we are a temple, he's really speaking of the church. He's, he's reminding this body that forget all the division and all the different um, men that you believe that you're following or not following. Forget all of that. The church is a temple. And that temple is holy. And so as I think about that message today, I think about all the verses in the Bible that talk about us as an individual and how we are a temple of God. Not only do we have the Holy Spirit in us, but the Bible tells us that we are a temple. So if we think about what a temple is, back in the Old Testament, the temple was the holiest place in the community. It was the dwelling place of God. It is a place where they would have rituals and do their sacrifices. They would um, have their uh, religious ordinances performed. It is a place where people could come and gather together and worship God. Temple worship was given to God's people so that they could come in, they could hear the, the laws of God, and they could understand and realize that they were sinful. And so what happened in the temple was ultimately pointing them towards a sacrifice, or, or in this case, the Savior. And so the temple was a place to point people to their need for the Savior. And we look in the book of Acts when we were back there a couple few weeks ago, and we see Stephen, and he's pointing out to the Sanhedrin that they're hypocrites. They are so worried more about the temple when the fact that the, the, the purpose of the temple was in their presence, that Jesus was in their very presence um, during his ministry in the three years that he was um, teaching and preaching the kingdom of God, and yet they were more worried about the laws and the rules and the temple itself. They were hypocrites. They were whitewashed tombs, Jesus said. They looked good on the outside, but they were just empty and filthy and dirty on the inside. So for the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the lawyers and all the religious elite of that time, the temple was far more important than what was in the temple. So I think about that today and I think about in my own life how we, if we are a body that is supposed to hold the Spirit of God, am I more worried about my temple or am I more worried about the spirit inside the temple. And so I know for me, it's really easy to get caught up in pleasing and, and making sure that I'm comfortable pleasing this temple's the flesh. When I say temple, I mean like my flesh. And so it's, it seem, it's really easy to please the flesh and make sure that this temple is healthy and strong and active and you know all of the things that make me feel good about myself. And, and just rather than thinking about the fact that it is a temple for the Holy Spirit, I think about it as a temple, like I need to you know, nurture it and, 
make sure it doesn't get too cold or doesn't get too hot and has enough food and all of those things. And I'm more worried about myself and my outside than I am about my inside. So I pulled a couple of things out of Colossians today that I wanted to consider as I was thinking about this. And Paul in Colossians says that we need to kind of put on the new self and take off the old self. And so I, I wrote a couple of things here. One of them is, rather than bearing the image of the Creator, we are focused on our own self-image. Rather than being holy and beloved, we are sinful and despised. Rather than showing compassion and kindness and love, we show anger and malice and slander. And rather than having forgiveness and patience with one another, we tend to be harsh and impatient. And that's what happens when we focus on the flesh or, or the temple, and we don't focus on the spirit that's inside of us. Because what we end up being more concerned about is ourself. And so we are prone to sexual immorality, we're prone to impurity, the Bible says, we're prone to sinful desires and lust and, and gossip and envy and covetousness and strife and anger and just all of those things that can build up inside of us when we don't replace what's on the inside with Jesus Christ. So if you're a believer in Jesus Christ today, I encourage you to, to kind of do an evaluation. What's inside your temple? Are you putting in those things that are harming the flesh and harming the spirit? Or are you putting in those things that are edifying to the spirit? Are you reading your word and praying and fellowshipping with believers and, and acts of service in the name of Christ? And you know, all of those things that would build up the Holy Spirit inside of you rather than building up the things of the flesh. It's really easy to come home from a hard day and turn on the television and fill our temple with entertainment or comfort. It's really easy to come home and make a nice dinner and relax and read a, a novel. It, it's really easy for us to, you know, just fill us with the comforts of this life. But it's not easy to nurture the Holy Spirit. It's not easy all the time to come home after a hard day and pick up your Bible and pray and think about the persecuted church or think about those family members who don't know Jesus that we need to be on our knees for and think about the fact that there's so many people on this planet, three and a half million people who don't even know Jesus. They've never heard the name of Jesus and we should be praying for them. And I mean, you know, it's all of these things that we could be doing to nurture the spirit, but it's just too easy to be comfortable and, and entertain and, and just sit back and nurture the flesh. So today I'm challenged and I hope that you're a little challenged. Rather than focusing in on our personal goals and desires and objectives, we really sit down and we pray to the Lord and say, Lord, what are your goals for my life? What are your objectives? What are your desires? If we are a temple of the Spirit of God, that means that we have the living God, the creator of the universe inside of us, in our hearts, in our soul, in our spirit, that it isn't just us pleasing our flesh and then we die. We have a purpose and that purpose is to fulfill the, the desires of Christ. So my encouragement to you today and my encouragement to myself is to really start this year, 2021, I know we're into it about a month and a half, but really prune the things of the world from my life. And I think it's God honoring to do that. I know for me, I, I'm so full of stuff. I've got sheds full of stuff and garages full of stuff. And my time is spent, you know, organizing my stuff and making sure, you know, trying to sell it or keep it or donate it or, you know, it just, we accumulate so many, so many things that just keep us from being able to do the things of the Lord. And so my desire for 2021, for this year, is to just really prune those things away and to be in tune to what the Holy Spirit would have for me. So I pray that that encourages you today. If you need prayer or encouragement or you just need a touch from the Lord, feel free to connect with us. We would love to pray with you. 
And uh, if you have any need for resources or you're in an area where you don't really know where to go to church and to really um, nurture that spirit inside you, then connect with us there. We do have a network of churches that we can connect you with and we'd love to do that. So may God bless you today. I pray that you're encouraged knowing that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are a temple of God. So God bless you and may you walk daily in Christ.